نحمد و نصلی علی رسول الكریم اما بعد بسم الله Today inshallah we will continue from verse number 30 of surah Saad A'udhu billahi min shaitan al-rajim Wa wahabna li Dawood Sulaiman ni'ma al-abd innahu awwab And to Dawood we gave Sulaiman an excellent servant Indeed, he was one repeatedly turning back to Allah. So, awab means kathiru ruju'a ila Allahi bi tawwati wa ta'ati, returning to Allah frequently with repentance and obedience. In the upcoming verses, we will be learning about an incident with Sulaiman alayhi salam, which highlights his connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, once Sulaiman alayhi salam was inspecting horses in the afternoon and he got so engrossed in this activity that he missed to perform the Asa Salah at his usual time. When he realized later, he repented and for the sake of Allah, he then slaughtered all the horses to ensure nothing distracts him from his obligation toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this was an incident that happened with Sulaiman as salam. There is another interpretation of this incident that Sulaiman as salam was inspecting the horses prepared for jihad after Asr. And this time in observing the horses was not out of recreation or leisure or his passion for horses, Rather, it was due to his appreciation of their utility in a jihad as commanded by Allah SWT, and also as a remembrance of his blessing on him. So when these horses went out of his sight due to them running far away and the dust rising from their galloping, he called these horses back to stroke their backs and legs. So in this interpretation, there is no sacrificing of the horses. And this second interpretation is preferred by Ibn Abbas and Allah knows best. When we look at Sira, we also find at least one situation, one incident where the Asr Salah was missed and was during the battle of Khandaq. Narrated by Jabir ibn Abdullah, the Talan al Bukhari, he says, Anna Umar ibn al Khattabi, Jaa yam al Khandaqi, Badam al Gharabati Shamsu, for Jaala Yisubu Kufar of Quraishin, Kala Yarasullah, Makitu Salil Asra, Hatta Kadati Shamsu, Tagurubu. Kala and Abu Sallallahu Sallam, Wallahi Masal Lituha. Fakumna ila Buthan, Fatawada al Salati. وتوضأنا لها فصلى العصر بعد ما غربت الشمس ثم صلى بعدها المغرب. On the day of Khandaq, the battle of the trench, Umar bin Khattab who came cursing the disbelievers of Quraysh after the sun had set and said, O oh Allah's Messenger, وسلم, I could not offer the Asr prayer till the sun had set. The Prophet وسلم, said, By Allah, I too have not prayed. So we turned towards Butan and the Prophet Sallallahu performed wudu and we performed wudu and offered the Asr prayer after the sun had set and then he offered the Maghrib prayer. So this was an incident where Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi and the Sahaba were so involved in the battle that the Asr time came and went and they only realized after the sun set. So again, there could be genuine situations where someone forgets um, and in those cases we are advised to pray as soon as we recall as it comes in the narration narrated by Anas bin Malik and in Bukhari Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said whoever forgets a prayer should pray it when he remembers there is no expiation in kafara other than this. Coming back to the story of Sulaiman al-Islam, we also learn a very useful technique on how to train your nafs. 
So when Suleiman al-Islam realized he made a mistake, he reprimanded himself by a self-imposed penalty. He forgot to pray Asr Salah, so he sacrificed the horses which led to his negligence. From the perspective of Sharia, it was not required to sacrifice those horses. He had already done his repentance. But this action would then become a strong reminder for him to remain focused on his obligations. We can employ the same technique in our daily matters. Let's say you know you have a bad habit of backbiting. And every time you catch yourself doing so, you realize you've made a mistake. In addition to repentance, one thing you can start doing is maybe do not eat your favorite food for a week or make it on yourself to offer two units of salat, nafil, and do istighfar. So because of the recurrence of this activity, after a while, you would be reminded strongly before even making that mistake and you would catch yourself إذا عرض عليه بالعشي صافنات الجياد mention when there were exhibited before him in the afternoon the poised standing race horses so بالعشي here in the عصر in time of عصر in صافنات means الخيول الواقفة على ثلاث قوائم وترفع رابعة so these were well trained horses and as an example they could stand on three legs and could raise the fourth one. So they were trained to do such a trick. And al-jiyad, al-khuyul al-asliyatu sariyatu. So horses of the fastest breed. So those were the horses that uh, in the afternoon Sulaiman Aslam was watching. فَقَالَ إِنِّي أَحْبَبْتُ حُبَّ الْخَيْرِ عَنْ ذِكِ الرَّبِّ حَتَّى تَوَارَتْ بِالْحِجَابِ And he said, indeed, I gave preference to the love of good things over the remembrance of my Lord until the sun disappeared into the curtain of darkness. Tawarat bil hijab min ghabat al shamsu aw ghabat al khaylu an aynihi. Rudduha alay wa tafiqa mashan bil suq wal a'naq. So what did he do? He said, return them to me and set about striking their legs and necks. So فَطَفِقَ means شَرْعَ He started doing it, taking an action. And مَسْحَمْ بِسُوقِ وَالْأَعْنَاقِ So he started to sacrifice those horses. وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّا سُلَيْمَانَ وَأَلْقَيْنَا عَلَىٰ كُرْسِيِّهِ جَسَدًا ثُمَّ أَنَابِ And we certainly tried Sulaiman and placed a body on his throne. Then he returned. So fatanna means ibtalayna. We tried, we tested him. And anab means raja'a ilallahi with tawbati. So he returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. And this verse refers to another test of Sulaiman al-Islam where a body was placed on his throne. And many mufassirun have uh, mentioned various explanations of this incident. But there is no direct reference found in any verse or hadith to support those explanations. So we should resort to the safe position of tawakkuf or silence. Instead, focus on the message here. And the message is to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after any mistake. And you will never be disappointed with his mercy. قَالَ رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي وَهَبْ لِي مُلْكًا لَا يَنْبَغِي لِأَحَدٍ مِّنْ بَعْدِي he said, My Lord, forgive me and grant me a kingdom such as will not belong to anyone after me. Indeed, you are the bestower. So the man in Islam asked Allah for forgiveness. And then he made a dua. He made a dua to grant him such a unique kingdom that no one gets it after him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his dua. And one of the things uniquely given to Sulaiman al-Islam was his control over wind and his control over jinns. And this is not something that has been granted to anyone after him. So now a question comes to mind. Sulaiman al-Islam asked for power and kingship. Rabbil firli wa habli mulkan. 
But we know that common people have been prohibited to seek authority. Narrated by Abdurrahman bin Samura, Ta'ala Anu and Muslim, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said to him, Ya Abdurrahman, لا تسأل الإمارة فإنك إن أعطيتها عن مسألة أكلت إليها وإن أعطيتها عن غير مسألة أعنت عليها وعبد الرحمن Do not ask for authority If it is given to you at your request you will be held fully responsible for it If it is given to you without your request you will be helped by Allah in it So how do we reconcile these two matters? On one hand, Sulaiman al-Islam asked for kingship, and on the other hand, it is advised to us we should not ask for authority. Scholars explain that the reason for Sulaiman al-Islam to ask for kingship was not due to personal desire to gain power. Rather, as a prophet, his intention was to implement divine laws under his authority. But for an average person, it is highly likely that a person would abuse power for personal desires and worldly benefits. And therefore, we're discouraged to seek office and power. But if someone feels he's qualified for the job and is certain that he will not use his position for personal gain, rather to establish Allah's orders and to uphold the rights of others, then it is permissible to go after such position. And Allah knows best. وَسَخَّرْنَا لَهُ الرِّيحَ تَجْرِي بِأَمْرِهِ رُخَاءً حَيْثُ أَصَابُ So we subjected to him the wind blowing by his command gently wherever he directed. So رُخَاءً means لَيِّنَةً طَيِّعَةً Softly, gently. And حَيْثُ أَصَابُ means حَيْثُ أَرَادَ whenever he intended. And also the devils of jinn, every builder and diver. And others bound together in shackles. So asfad means aghlal, shackles, chains. Sulaiman al-Islam was not only unique in having control over the wind, but he also had control over jinns. Now, different jinns were used for different services under his command. Some used to build castles, and others used to dive in deep sea to fetch jewels and pearls. But there were some who were rebellious, and they refused to work, so Sulaiman al-Islam had to keep them in chains. We said, this is our gift to so grant or withhold without any account. Indeed, for him is nearness to us and a good place of return. So, la zulfa means la qurba. Husna ma'ab, husna marja'in fil akhirah. So, a good place of return in the hereafter. وَذْكُرْ عَبْدَنَا أَيُّوبُ إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ أَنِّي مَسَّنِيَ الشَّيْطَانُ بِنُصْبٍ وَعَذَابٍ And remember our servant Ayyub when he called to his Lord Indeed, Shaitan has touched me with hardship and torment. So, نُصْبٍ means مُشَقَّةٍ وَتَعَبٍ Difficulty, hardship. Ayyub al-Islam was tested with his health, his wealth, and his children. He used to be very rich and had many children, but once he got afflicted by a disease, all people around him left except his wife, who took care of him for almost 18 years. And we do not know the exact nature of the disease, but some commentators say it was in the form of blisters on his body, while others believe that it was a rather common disease and not anything repulsive. And Allah knows best. Let's focus on these words, Masani Shaitan. Why did Ayyub salam say, Shaitan had put me in hardship and pain? 
we know in Surah Isra, in verse 65, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan, wa kafa bi rabbika wakila. Verily my servants, you have no authority over them, and all sufficient is your Lord as a guardian. So certainly, if shaitan would not have any influence, authority over chosen people, then definitely shaitan would have no control over prophets. So why did Ayyub al-Islam say here that shaitan had put me in hardship? How do you explain this verse? You find a plausible explanation in the tafsir of Jalalain. And he says, وَنَسَبَ ذَلِكَ إِلَى الشَّيْطَانِ وَإِنْ كَانَتِ الْأَشْيَاءُ كُلَّهَا مِنَ اللَّهِ تَعَدُّبًا مَعَهُ تَعَالَى Although Yubi al-Islam knew very well that any and all matters are by the command of Allah, he attributed the hardship and pain towards shaitan due to his utmost reverence and humility towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah knows best. ارْكُضْ بِرِجْلِكْ هَذَا مُغْتَسَلٌ بَارِدٌ وَشَرَابٌ So he was told, strike the ground with your foot. This is a spring for a cool bath and drink. So ارْكُضْ بِرِجْلِكْ اِضْرِبْ بِرِجْلِكَ الْأَرْضَ لِيَنْبُعَ لَكَ الْمَاءُ Strike your foot on the ground so water flows for you. And then مُغْتَسَلٌ بَارِدٌ means مَاءٌ تَغْتَسِلُ بِهِ فِيهِ شِفَاءُكْ A water for you or cure. When you take a bath from it. So what was the cure uh, for Ayyub al-Islam? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it such that when he would uh, strike the ground with his foot, water would spring out from it. And then you know, once he takes a bath from that water, it would cure his disease. So that was how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a cure after years of him in suffering. وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ أَهْلَهُ وَمِثْلَهُمْ مَعَهُمْ رَحْمَةً مِنَّا وَذِكْرَى لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ And we granted him his family and a like with them as mercy from us and a reminder for those of understanding. وَمِثْلَهُمْ مَعَهُمْ Meaning, زِدْنَاهُ مِثْلَهُمْ مَعَهُمْ We increased his family. So it was not only cured, but his family uh, proliferated. Spread, increased in number. لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ يَصْحَابِ الْأُقُولِ salima, Meaning, for people of sound intellect, there is uh, a, a message, a lesson in the story of Ayyub a.s. وَخُذْ بِيَدِكَ إِنْدِغْثًا فَضْرِبْ بِهِ وَلَا تَحْنَثْ إِنَّا وَجَدْنَاهُ صَابِرَ نِعْمَ الْعَبْدِ إِنَّهُ أَوَّابِ we said, and take in your hand a bunch of grass and strike with it and do not break your oath. Indeed, we found him patient, an excellent server. Indeed, he was one repeatedly turning to Allah SWT. The word نِقْتَن means حُزْمَةَ شَمَارِيخَ أَوْ قَبْلَةَ hashish, A bundle of twigs or a bunch of grass. So what is the incident behind this verse? Scholars explain that Ayyub al-Islam had been suffering for years and his wife was desperately looking for a cure. So once shaitan approached her in the form of a physician and when she asked him to treat Ayyub al-Islam, he demanded that Ayyub al-Islam acknowledge that uh, the cure happened due to shaitan, this doctor. Of course, these terms had shirk in it, and that was the purpose of shaitan. Only Allah cures and relieves a person from his disease. So when his wife presented the proposal of shaitan to Ayyub al-Islam, he not only refused it, but got angry at his wife and took an oath at that time that he would beat his wife with 100 sticks once he becomes healthy again. So much later on, when Allah healed Ayyub al-Islam, he wanted to fulfill his oath. But he also felt uncomfortable since his wife had taken good care of him. She didn't really deserve a punishment. Allah solved this dilemma for him and commanded him to make a bundle of hundred twigs and strike her once with this bunch to fulfill his oath. So he won't be 
breaking his oath, but rather fulfilling it in a way that is easy on her wife as well. So what do we learn from this incident of Ayub a.s.? The scholars through this incident find permissibility in a tactic or hila to avoid unfavorable outcomes. And in the case of Ayub al it was by hitting his wife once with 100 twigs, and this way he would fulfill his oath and avoid seriously injuring her. But we should keep in mind that there are conditions under which hila is permissible. So we should not apply this approach without proper consideration. As an example, some people try to escape zakat on their assets by transferring them for a few days prior to the year end and then transferring them back once the due date of zakat is over. But this scheme, this tactic, cannot be classified as an acceptable hila because it is circumventing the essence the true purpose behind zakat. And it would actually be unlawful to trick yourself out of zakat. We should also remember at this point that there are other ways for you to avoid unfavorable outcomes of an oath other than hila. And one of them is to give kafar, expiation. As a matter of fact, it is preferred to give kafara in some cases, rather than fulfilling the oath, as narrated by Abu Hurairah ta'ala anhu in Muslim, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Man halafa ala yamin faraa ghayraha khayram minha, wal yukafir an yaminihi wal yafal." He who took an oath and then found another thing better than this should expiate for the oath broken by him and do the better thing. Reflecting on the situation of Ayub alayhi salam, we realize how his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was so strong that years upon years of experiencing the suffering that he had, he remained steadfast and he remained hopeful, optimistic that in the end Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will heal him. And if nothing else, you know, he remained committed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's um, obedience throughout this time. And we learn about this principle, this um, promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Talaq. It applies to us also. If we remain steadfast in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, regardless of what situation, what hardships we face, in the end, we will get the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As it comes in Surah Talaq, verse number 2 and 3, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُ And whoever fears Allah, He will make for him a way out and will provide for him from where he does not expect. And whoever relies upon Allah, then he is sufficient for him. Stop here, inshallah. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّا كَنْتَ السَّمِينَ عَلِيمٌ وَتَبَعْ لَيْنَا إِنَّا كَنْتَ التَّوَابُ رَحِ